Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to upgrade my AMC 20 rear end with a one-piece axle kit. The kit that I bought is from Mosier, but there's a handful of companies out there that, that provide uh, solutions for these axles, and uh, I think it's probably a really good upgrade. It's going to really strengthen this axle. Uh, originally it comes with a two-piece axle shaft and a hub, which, you know, they're married together. In fact, I got it right here. Let me just show you what that looks like. You know, here's the end, the splined end for the uh, differential, but out of the hub, it's got small splines and a tapered shaft right here to help center the hub, and then a little woodruff key, and just that, that's just not going to provide the strength when you start upgrading the horsepower of the engine and that type of stuff. In fact, here's, this, here's the cast hub that goes on there, and it's got spline gears in it, and um, you know these two together again just doesn't create the type of strength solution that a, a one piece forge piece would do so let me bring you into this kit and show you a little bit closer what comes in the box and here's a look at what comes in the kit so it, uh, it is two axles one is one is three inches shorter than the other so there is a left and a right but it does come pre-installed with uh, studs uh, five studs in my case and then uh, you get this retainer ring with the outer seal you get two Timken set nine bearings you get this spacer ring this spacer ring is used to lock this inner race to the shaft um, you get a spacer that gets installed in the housing this is used to jam up against the outer race and make sure it's locked to the housing and then just inside that is uh, it comes with two inner seals so uh, also comes with uh, some this ultra weld gray silicone gasket maker that's going to be used in a couple places just to make sure we don't have any leaking and seals what it doesn't come with is, uh, and it says it's, it's, it's optional whether you do it, whether you use them or not, but uh, you can use your old dust shields. Mine were, in some reason, were in pretty crappy condition, so I went ahead and just bought these. These came from Crown, uh, like about seven bucks a piece. I bought two of them, J3184573. So anyway, that, that'll actually go out over here somewhere. But these are kind of in order in which they get installed. Uh, these two items will get installed in the housing ultimately and then all of this will get installed and pressed onto the shafts um, so first thing we're going to do is we'll work on uh, getting these installed but we got a little bit of a delta we're going to do with the instructions um, they have you install this seal first and then this spacer and then push in the bearing by itself just to get try and work out the preload and if you got to change it you actually take this back out and you got to change the thickness of this well if you're going to try and pull this thing out and this seal's in there you're going to destroy the seal so I'm actually going to install this without the seal at first, try and get my, my um, preload correct, and once I get the preload, then, I'll, then we'll actually do a, a full install. Here's a look at the end of the housing, and um, you know, there's several contours and, and surfaces in here. Let me take a quick picture of that and, and see if I can put that on the screen for you and where you can see it. Okay. Um, but it's flat from here back to right there where that line is. And then it steps just a straight step up. And then it goes flat for about, looks like about four millimeters or so. And then there's a chamfer. And then there's a long flat and another little line. And then a big chamfer and then another chamfer. And then the tube that just disappears into the, the pumpkin. So there's quite a few different things. It would kind of make sense that... Um, then let's look at these two things. So this this seal is going to go in this side first. You always put this spring toward the oil. So that's going to go in first. And then according to my diagram, I'll bring a picture of the diagram up as well. These two are going to look like this together. And they're going to go in like that. Now again, I'm not going to put in the seal right now. I'm going to put that away. But with this going in, you would think that uh, this small little section here would be on that little surface. And then this would be on that. But if we do that... I don't think there's going to be enough room for the seal. So let's drive this in and see how far, let's just see how far it goes in like this. Yeah, that's going to get up on that surface there. Let me drive that in until it stops and see what we got. Oh, all right, so we just hit bottom. 
yeah, even there it doesn't look like there's much room for that seal. Um, let me take a measurement from that surface to this outside. Actually, let's just put this bearing. Here's our bearing. Now, according to the drawing, this bearing goes in this side first. And I think what they're wanting is um, once this gets installed on the axle shaft, that, that locking ring has got to go against this inner piece. So that's why it's got to go that direction. Um, this goes in. I think typically they would go in the other way, but the way they got their set up in the drawing... And it, it even talks about it in the literature, so it's this definitely goes in first. Um, oh, that just slides in. All right, we're actually below level. This is supposed to stick out between two twenty and eighty thousandths, and we're actually below. So that seal is actually going to provide a little bit of thickness. To get in there so because right now i would have zero in play so let me hmm i guess i am going to put that seal in there and if it's not right there's no way if that seals in there and i try and pull this back out it's it's uh it's going to destroy the seal but i can always go buy another seal if that's the case so let me get this back out we'll get the seal installed and then i'll put this ring back in it we'll try it again Okay, so here's here's the inner seal. The spring goes toward the oil, which would be that direction. And when you're tapping on this, if that spring comes off, it, the, the thing does not work, right? So I've seen where people put uh, grease on there like that just to help hold that spring in place. Well, especially when you're going to tap on it. And uh, let's, get, uh, let's get that installed. different sound. All right, the instructions say to repack this. It's got some grease in it. There's some voids back here, so I'm going to let me go put some more grease on this just to have it full and then we'll get it pushed in okay so i've added some just a little bit extra grease to that and i guess i would probably need to grease it again once i get it on the axle but let's get it pushed in and see what we got my feeler gauges um the spec is you know from this surface to this surface it needs to be between twenty thousandths and eighty thousandths I've got 20 thousandths dot up here uh, in a, I got a 23, 22, 21, and a 15, that's 80 thousandths. I put all those together. And it's just less than that, so it's less than 80 thousandths. And if I just put the 21 thousandths, it's gonna be more than that. It's definitely more than 21 thousandths. So, so we're between, we're, we're in spec, so I don't need to thin down that uh, spacer in there. Um, so what I'm going to do, let's take this out. Um, I'm going to get the other side this far, and then we'll go to the press and we'll get uh, the axles all prepped. Since some of this stuff is vehicle side specific, I went ahead and laid it out. Um, this is the driver's side. It's the shorter axle. Passenger side's over here, driver's side over here. Shorter axle here, that's the 23 inch axle. I've got, uh, this is universal, this is universal. I went ahead and packed this with grease. It's got a spring on it. It's gonna go toward the pumpkin. It also, they asked for sealant. I thought it'd be easier to put the sealant on now. Uh, we'll have the bearing goes on and then this, um, they're calling this a press ring. And then this this backing plate, this is this is the original backing plate from the vehicle. I sandblasted it and I use, I like that VHT paint um because one of the things you can do not only does it have a um it's for very high temp um but you can you got a primer and you got the couple coats of black on here but after it 
kind of dries for 12 hours or better, you can actually put this, I put it in the oven, uh, and you kind of bake it in, 200 degrees for an hour. It, it makes it seem like it's super tough, but uh, I went ahead and labeled this. So um, I know that my wheel cylinder goes to the top. I know this goes away from the vehicle, you know, facing outward. And, um, and then the key is the hole, the emergency brake holes on this side, meaning this is the driver side. So this would be the driver. And then the passenger is just the opposite. It's got a um, wheel cylinder, this points out, and then if the hole's on, you know, facing forward of the vehicle, so if that's the forward of the vehicle, this has to be the passenger. So, um, and then this is actually gonna go on that direction. You gotta get all this stuff direction specific as well. Um, so they talk about putting this dust pan, dust cover on first. It goes like that. And then we got this seal, need the, the spring and the grease toward the pumpkin so it needs to go on like this we got our backing plate and just a reminder this goes out toward toward the wheel so down bearing this piece goes out that piece goes in in is up okay and then we got the press ring all right go ahead I'm going to do this side too I guess get it situated this goes down rotate it so that it matches that guy. We'll give you rotate it again. There. All right, this guy just goes out, that goes in, in is up. So it's like that. This one loaded in the press, and we'll get that pressed on. I've added some gray silicone to that flange, and then there's also some that we put on earlier. Uh, let me get this slid in. Just like that. And then I probably didn't show it, but um, to help hold all this stuff together while that silicone was there, I actually put on some zip ties. So now we can get those cut off. And then I'm going to add a little bit of blue Loctite on these. Okay, got that side together and we'll go on, move to the other side.
Did you hear all that? That was ratcheting. Kind of an old school way of fastening things. Too many people are saying, why don't you put an impact wrench on it? Well, sometimes you don't need to do that. <laughs> okay, so that seems to be working really good. We got, uh, I turned the yoke, that thing goes and the other side goes as well. Um, relatively an easy install. Um, I guess the one kind of must have tool I think would be that hydraulic press. That made putting on the pr uh, press ring and the bearing a very easy task without that I don't know how you would get that on there very well I don't think you want to beat on it too much but anyway let's go give away something well it feels good to have one more piece of the puzzle solved um, that again was not very difficult I think you could add some complexity if you had to reduce that spacer shim because you're going to try and reduce it evenly across that may be a little bit more difficult but uh, I imagine the, the manufacturer tries to create a solution that's going to fit the norm or the most most of those axles so anyway um, very very simple install um, so let me do another giveaway I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna give away another project rowdy keychain and um, you know just something simple really more of an appreciation for all my viewers and and um, you know in order to be ex uh, eligible for this so leave a comment below this video and somewhere in the comment the beginning the end middle somewhere put hashtag project rowdy um, and once this video hits 1,000 views I will do a I'll give away this keychain and uh, do a, a random pick a comment picker that includes that hashtag. That's just a way to identify the, those who want it or not. And you know, it's just a keychain. I don't expect to put this on your daily driver, but maybe a, a riding lawnmower or a tractor or maybe the shed out back where you store all your money. Um, yeah, just something something kind of fun. So, uh, but. I really do appreciate everyone for watching and all the, the typical great comments and, and the, the, the group of people that, that these videos have um, collected. Uh, it's, it's just remarkable. So anyway, I, lo I love the support and love the encouragement and I, I do want to thank you so much for watching and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Jack it up.